Backing a losing football team can make you fat, really. That's the results of a new research study that was conducted by INSEAD marketing professor Pierre Chandon, who's here today to discuss the results with us. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Pierre. Tell us a little bit about this study and how you arrived at this conclusion. With a PhD student at INSEAD named Jan Cornille, we looked at the effect of the performance of your favorite football team, American football in this case, on your consumption on the day after either a defeat or victory by this team. And what we found was just fascinating. We found that on a Monday, uh, one day after a defeat, Americans eat 16% more saturated fat and 10% more calories. But on the day after a victory of their favorite team, then it's the opposite, they eat healthier. They eat 9% less saturated fat and 5% fewer calories. And so the basic behavior that we found is that, um, as you said, the performance of your favorite team influences what and how much you eat. I see. Well, tell me a little bit, um, how did you get interested in, in, in actually studying this? So Has it ever been done before? No, actually, there's been a, a lot of studies on the effect of uh, football uh, defeats on things like uh, traffic accidents, uh, heart attacks, even domestic violence, and they all found really big effects of defeats. But no one has really looked at uh, the effects of uh, um, football games on eating, which we thought was kind of interesting because eating and watching football are two of the most popular activities in the world. Well, now, was this study just looking at uh, American football, or were you, was it broader than that? So we started with American football because it's such a big deal. You know, the, uh, the Super Bowl is the most watched event in, uh, in uh, America. But we also looked at uh, soccer, or you know, what we call football here in Europe, which is even bigger deal because more than two billion people tuned in to watch the World Cup, for example, last time. And what we found was exactly the same effect. I see. All right. Well, um, I mean, obviously, this is not very good news to the average, uh, you know, football fan. Um, you know, people could actually put on a fair amount of weight if, they were, if their team was on a losing streak. But um, what can be done about it? I mean, is there a solution? Is there a cure to this, to this problem? Right. So to clarify, we found an effect on what people eat the day after. We didn't look at whether people actually put on weight. But you're right, this is the, exactly the conclusion. If you're rooting for a loser, you might actually gain but weight. Okay. So, um, so there are two solutions. One of them is to switch allegiance, but that's not exactly a very popular idea. Um, so the other one is actually to uh, do something which we tested in our studies, which actually is very easy, which is called self-affirmation. So the basic idea, the basic uh, issue here is that uh, when you're a fan, the team is part of your self-identity. In fact, if you're a fan of a team, you don't say they lost, you say we lost. And so in a way, I lost. And so you don't feel so good about yourself. And uh, uh, so the idea is you want to restore a little bit your self-esteem and realize that football is not the only thing uh, that's important to you. And there may be other things in life, like your family, like maybe you know, God or maybe other sports that matters. And so what we ask people to do is just rank and list what's important in their life. And the simple technique was uh, enough to eliminate the effect of watching the defeat. And uh, so there's a solution that sports fans or their loved ones can use after a really brutal defeat to avoid uh, really growing and splurging on uh, chocolate candies. Um, aside from, of course, this major finding that you, you talked about where you know, calorie consumption goes up and, and saturated fat, are, are there any other uh, main findings that you also discovered in doing your research? Yes, yeah, so very interestingly, we found that the effects were the same for men and women. Although men tend to be more uh, fans, fanatics, um, women perhaps uh, tend to be more emotional eaters. We also found actually uh, the worst effects was uh, when your favorite team was playing against an opponent of equal strength. When the defeat was unexpected, if you knew that the odds were bad, it's easier to accept it. And when the defeat was narrow, okay? When it came down to the wire, when they could have won, this is when it's really the most difficult. And who do you think should be most interested in, in these findings? Is, is it food companies that you think should be paying attention to this or health ministries for that matter who are you know, concerned about rising rates of obesity? Um, who do you think, or of course football fans? Really it's mostly for the fans because the basic message is that uh, emotional eating is uh, bigger than we think. We are influenced by so many things that are not under our control and that influence in, in a really profound way what we eat. In the eight cities with the most devoted NFL fans, we found that uh, their increase in saturated fat consumption was 28% after the defeat. I mean, these are really big effects, okay? Uh, and they were not compensated the day after. So it's, you just eat more and eat uh, more fat, 
And uh, so just have to be aware of that and, and, and think and anticipate how you could be influenced uh, by uh, your sports team. Do you foresee uh, a follow-up to this research study? Are you going to go in another direction to try to take this farther? One thing that uh, we find in most uh, studies on, on, on nutrition and health is that emotions are always the enemy. It's a bit the same thing here, um, especially negative emotions like uh, feeling sad and hurt. But um, with Jan uh, Cornel, my, my co-author, we are looking at how you could make emotions uh, an ally in eating healthier. And so we're looking at how by a better uh, describing the sensory and the aesthetic pleasure of eating, you might actually get more satisfied with less food. And so uh, instead of seeing pleasure as the enemy and um, trying to get rid of pleasure in uh, food, which is what nutritionists always say, uh, let's try to better understand the role of pleasure and emotions in general, and let's try to leverage that to help us make the healthier, healthier choice. Well, thank you for coming in today and speaking with us, uh, Professor Pierre Chandon with INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you very much.